Before the advent of chemical weed control, before the introduction of herbicide-tolerant crops, weeds with a high degree of genetic diversity existed. The ever-increasing demand for higher productivity from each and every acre, a shift to large-scale production agriculture, a departure from diverse weed management practices, and the introduction of herbicide-tolerant crops have all contributed in some way to weeds becoming resistant to numerous herbicide modes of action. One by one, we have seen these herbicide tools pushed beyond their capacity, and one by one, we have rendered these once precious resources virtually ineffective. Weed resistance has a large impact on my operation, first in higher herbicide costs, and second, Resistant weeds impact yield. It's very expensive fighting this stuff. If you let your farm grow up in a resistant weed, it will cost you so much money to try to get it back where you want it to be. The pattern is unmistakable. Industry discovers a new weed control tool. It's highly effective and rapidly adopted on a broad scale. Upon the heels of excellent weed control, other useful tools are set aside and the new tool is used exclusively year in and year out, driven by the desire for simplicity. Over the course of time, over-reliance sets the tool up for failure because Mother Nature always adapts. We've seen this pattern with numerous chemistries, from PS2 inhibitors to ALS inhibitors, to PPO inhibitors to glyphosate. We've witnessed varying degrees of failure. Now, we face a critical moment in time. Recent confirmations of resistant species to HPPD inhibitors and synthetic auxins have shown once again that failure to utilize diverse weed management practices has resulted in failure. We tend to think, not on my land. Resistance will never impact me. It's my neighbor's problem. But how do we know that weed or patch of weeds isn't resistant? And how can we conclude resistance won't impact me when year after year herbicide resistance continues to spread? It's spread over our farm. We farm about 36 miles in difference from one end to the other. We didn't have anything on this end, on the southern end of that, of that uh, distance last year, this year we have it. So in one year, we've seen that problem spread 36 miles. And if it can spread 36 miles, it's, you know, over time it's gonna spread thousands of miles. We used to farm 4,000 acres of cotton and we farmed that with the Roundup technology. Now we're farming 2,000 acres of cotton with more time and management on the 2,000 acres than we were on four because of the resistant weed. Resistant genes and pollen spread via wind. Resistant weed seed is spread by animals, humans, equipment, wind, or flooding. It's not hard to imagine how resistant weeds could be transported from one field to another, across the state, or even across the country. Shared equipment, workers, and animals all unknowingly move weed seed from field to field. The question isn't if, but when will resistance impact me? I think the most important thing a grower needs to know is that he has the problem and needs to address it immediately. The critical thing with weed resistance is that it's something that a grower needs to take a proactive approach with and uh, once you have the problem, it's too late to, to really solve it in the most effective way. I think the, the growers that we have today have really come to, to say that they want to manage this resistance, they want to do a better job, and right now we're just working really you know, hard on trying to figure out what programs work the best to manage the resistant weeds that we have. We stand at a critical crossroads. Will we choose wisely? Will we think beyond today? Not all herbicides have been rendered ineffective, yet the pattern repeats itself over and over again. The next silver bullet is increasingly hard to find. The question is, who can fix this dilemma? 
who can protect the tools that still work? Sustainable weed management is all about preserving the valuable herbicide tools that we currently have. Syngenta, through its Resistance Fighter program, provides local advice and local guidance to growers on their weed management tactics. Growers have a lot of questions and we want to be there at the local level to provide the answers. I'm very confident that growers are stepping up to be part of the solution. Resistance issues are a national problem, but the solution to resistant weeds begins down on the farm. My name is Clint Einspire and I am a resistance fighter. My name is Justin Carricker. I am a resistance fighter and I am part of the solution. My name is Gary Bailey. I am a resistance fighter and I am part of the solution. I am part of the solution. I am. I am. I am. I am part of the solution. Be a resistance fighter. Be the solution. <laughs>